News 5 at 6 is brought to you by Mr. Hero. Right now, get a 10-inch Roman burger for only $5.55. News 5 on your side starts now. Good evening. We start tonight with the weather. We'll get to the news of the day in just a bit. But first, the weather as we await our springtime temperatures. Mark Johnson, how long will that wait be? Well, we got another day and a half to wait before we begin a nice little climb up because we've got some big time cold returning to the area. It has been a mild day. It is still mild. Look at Cleveland at 55 and cloudy. Some sunshine in Ashtabula, 49. But there is a front right about here, stirring up some rain showers, western Ohio into the Columbus area. We are dry. It looks like we're going to stay dry until this front goes by. So mild now, but just to our north. In fact, right along the lakeshore, there's Rob Powers. There we go. Right along the lakeshore, we're seeing some temperature falls already, down to near 40 degrees in Mentor. Now watch. That cold Arctic air is spilling down, and we will begin to see temperatures like this by about midnight. And then we're talking mid-20s for overnight lows and not much of a, of a recovery during the day tomorrow. So we go 51 at 7, and look at this. By 9 a.m., we're in the mid-20s. We'll only rise into the lower and middle 30s for highs on Wednesday. But hold the phone. I got much warmer weather in my seven day. In fact, just in time for your weekend, Rob. We'll have more on that coming up. Okay, Mark, we'll talk to you just a bit. Right now, a brazen bank robber storming his way into a fifth third branch and pointing a long gun right at the bank teller. In what was almost like a scene out of a movie, the robber, whose face and head were completely covered in all black, demanded cash. Federal investigators say he then jumped into the passenger seat of a red car, possibly a Nissan Altima, maybe a Maxima. The driver then took off. And shortly after noon today, this man also robbed a bank. He handed a note to a teller at the PNC Bank in Cleveland demanding cash from the drawers. If you have any information on either of these bank robberies today, the FBI is offering a reward that leads to prosecution. And we've just learned new information tonight about the one-year-old child found wandering around Cleveland's east side this weekend. The woman who says she found the girl was actually the girl's babysitter. And Brianna Cook was actually supposed to be watching the child when she was found on the steps of a vacant home on East 78th Street. Her mother came forward when she saw her daughter's picture on the news. But as of right now, the child is in custody with the County Family Services Department. Cook has been charged with falsification. Now to an old trick, and it is starting to turn violent. Bump and runs on the rise across northeast Ohio. We just heard about one in the middle of the night in Lakewood. News 5's Tara Molina spoke with police. They have a warning now all drivers should hear. Well, they hit you from behind. You think you've been in a simple traffic accident. And when you get out of the car to look at the damage, they approach you with, with weapons drawn or demand things from you. It's called a bump and run. And the thefts are being reported across greater Cleveland in communities like Beechwood, Westlake, and most recently, Lakewood. <laughs> Captain Ed Hassling told me in this morning's case, the thieves were threatening, both holding guns. Two suspects got out of the car that struck him with guns, uh, demanded his money and his car. It all happened in the wee hours of the morning here on Bunce Road. The man involved didn't want to go on camera, but police are investigating, trying to find the thieves behind it. The stolen car, already recovered in Cleveland, now being held by the department. So, if you get rear-ended and something feels off, you don't want to get out of the car, the captain told me, that's okay. If you don't feel comfortable getting out of the car, stay in your car and call 911. Tara Molina with that report. Now, there have been cases similar to this one in Cleveland, so the police departments are now working together to see if the investigations are connected. Police are not ready to tell us yet if they are. Those were the worst moments of my life. A mother just months after losing her 12-year-old son as a result of a hit and run is furious tonight after finding the woman charged with his death is still behind the wheel. He was broken into so many pieces. I would give him my life right now if he could live. And not only is the woman behind the wheel, she's been documenting some of it on social media. And to make matters worse, she wasn't supposed to be driving in the first place when she hit and killed Amir Mitchell. News 5's Megan Hickey spoke to the boy's mother, and Megan, she has still got to be grieving her son's death. 
Her youngest son lost consciousness in her arms right here in this street, just steps from their home, and she worries other people might now be in danger. Breathe, Amir, breathe, breathe, Amir, breathe. Those were Nevada Clark's last words to her son as he lay dying in her arms, broken into pieces by a hit and run driver. He had broken ribs, his pelvis was broken, both legs were broken, both arms were broken. In order to do that much damage, you had to be going at such a rate of speed that was more than 25. Seven months later, these red signs are the only thing left of a mirror on Roxbury Road. Witnesses were quick to call police, and eventually 19-year-old Starlisha Lewis was forced to turn herself in. I would give my life right now if he could live. She was charged with vehicular homicide and leaving the scene of an accident. And making matters worse, we discovered she shouldn't have been behind the wheel in the first place. According to court records, her license was suspended or canceled. She bonded out six days after her arrest, but without a valid license, Amir's family assumed that Lewis would be off the roads. But posts on Lewis's Instagram account show just the opposite. Her followers tell me she posted multiple videos while driving. And just days ago, she shared these pictures, showing her in a neck brace and saying she was in a car accident, followed by this picture of a car with significant damage to the driver's side. Clark said the pictures made her heart skip a beat. And that hurts me to the bottom of my soul. So why is Lewis on the road? She did not respond to our requests for comment, and she was not home when we came to her apartment. I asked the prosecutor's office if Lewis is violating the terms of her bond. I did not receive a response. Clark says she's waiting for answers, too. Until it happens to someone and it's their family, they're not going to understand my pain. Lewis was bound over to Cuyahoga County Court and has a pretrial conference set for Monday. Live in East Cleveland, Megan Hickey, News 5. Megan, thank you. A Streetsboro man who says he saw a stolen dirt bike listed for sale on the Internet shot and killed a man when he went to confront him about that last night. William Knight admitting in a 911 call to shooting and killing 24-year-old Keith Johnson. Knight told police his dirt bike had been stolen from an Akron garage last year. He saw pictures of it on social media for sale. That's when he contacted Johnson to meet up. Knight brought the title for the bike with him, but there was an argument. Knight told police that's when Johnson got on the bike and started driving toward him. Knight's been charged with involuntary manslaughter. He's being held right now in $500,000 bond. And this just into the newsroom, a downtown Cleveland bar has now been cited by the Department of Public Safety for two violations for selling and furnishing liquor to a person under the age of 21. That's in addition to the citations the city of Cleveland issued, forcing that bar to keep its doors closed until it fixes several code violations. At last check, the woman who fell Friday was still in critical condition at a local hospital. Playing both sides of the opioid epidemic, News 5 has discovered a pharmaceutical company identified as fueling the crisis, now making money off the overdoses as well, and they are closely connected with a few Ohio politicians. Mona Kosar Abdi has been looking into this win-win situation for Big Pharma. Mona. Rob, we've seen the videos of countless Ohioans on the brink of death, given a second chance at life by the so-called miracle drug naloxone. The drug, a weapon of choice for emergency crews on the front lines of the battle against the opioid epidemic, which many of our lawmakers have blamed the pharmaceutical companies for fueling. The same pharma companies who donated heavily to a handful of Ohio politicians, including our own Senator Rob Portman. He was one of the major recipients of donations from pharma giant Pfizer. Inc. Portman, you may remember, co-authored the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act aimed at confronting the issue. Naloxone has become so important to that battle that Senator Rob Portman pushed for the expansion of naloxone programs in his CARA Act. But we have learned that Pfizer, most notable for their opioid painkillers, also now produces naloxone. Portman says he was not aware. You're telling me new information. I, I'm not aware of it. And uh, again, I, I make my decisions, including the CARA legislation, based on what's best for our constituents. And according to the Associated Press, from 2006 to 2015, other Ohio lawmakers also accepted contributions from pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer. Representative Pat Tiberi took 300000 while Congresswoman Marsha Fudge took 78000 Live in the studio, Monica Sarabdi, News 5. 
Still ahead for us on News 5 at 6, he was an officer with CMHA, now accused of having inappropriate relations with kids he was a mentor to. Now we've got our hands on his personnel file, which is hundreds of pages long. Plus, a legislative move underway right now in Columbus to make marital rape illegal in Ohio. And a new law in effect in the Buckeye State has some drivers moving over for bicyclists on the road. News 5 is always investigating, learning new information about a Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority police officer accused of sexually abusing teens. Those teens, members of the department's police youth mentoring program. Officer Christopher Collins, its leader. Our own Kristen Volk broke this story on Twitter nearly two weeks ago, and she has been asking the tough questions ever since. Kristen, today you got your hands on police officer Collins's personnel file. It's a whopping 414 pages. Yeah, Rob, I have it right here. And inside, it explains how Officer Christopher Collins was involved with other youth groups in an advisor role and details what prompted him to lead CMHA's Explorer program. They're called Explorer Programs, and they're run by a Boy Scouts of America organization. They're supposed to give teens an opportunity to get interested in a career early on. Sir, 20 seconds, sir. 20 seconds. But a Cuyahoga County grand jury says CMHA's Police Explorer Program was an opportunity for Officer Christopher Collins to take advantage of five teens who looked up to him. Those teens called Explorers. Collins has since been indicted on multiple charges. And now we're uncovering more about this 26-year-old man through this, his CMHA employee personnel file. In here, it says he also led two other local youth programs besides CMHA's Explorer Group, one being the Youth Police Academy, the other a program called Hooked on Fishing, Not on Drugs. And in his own words on this pre-employment interview form, Collins says, working with the children is a way for me to relax let my guard down, and just open up. In this same document, Collins boasts that he used to be a participant in the Cleveland Police Explorers program as a teen, and that sparked his interest in police work. We are still going through this large file, and we will have much more tomorrow morning in my E-Team report. Collins has pled not guilty to all charges, and CMHA's police chief refused our most recent request for an interview regarding their Explorers program and Collins's investigation. In the newsroom, I'm Kristen Volk, News 5. We look forward to that tomorrow, Kristen. Thank you. Right now, a handful of state lawmakers are trying to close a loophole that makes drugging and then raping your spouse legal in Ohio. This legislative proposal presented to a House committee today aims to get rid of spousal exceptions when it comes to rape and other sex-related offenses. There have been several attempts here at passing a bill that would eliminate those exceptions. Ohio is still, though, one of 13 states that still has these types of legal exceptions in place. That proposal would have to pass through both sides of the state house before becoming law. There's a new law on the books in Ohio that's aiming to keep bicyclists safe on the roads. Drivers being told they must have three feet between them and a cyclist. But what about the other way around? News 5's Paul Kiska live for us in downtown Cleveland. Paul, now, you spoke with a bike expert today about that very question. That's exactly right, Rob. You know, there's been a lot of talk this week about that new law going into effect and how it's supposed to protect bicyclists. But what laws do bicyclists have to follow? The new state law requires cars to give bikes a three-foot cushion when passing. But bicyclists also have rules to ride by. Bikes on the road must have lights at night, red in the back, white in the front. Most bicycles come with reflectors when you buy them new, which is fine for daytime use, but dusk and beyond, you need actual illumination placed on the bike. Jason Kuhn with Bike Cleveland told me today, bicyclists are not allowed to ride between vehicles, something you have probably seen before. If you're talking about like splitting between, like like moving lanes of, of traffic, then, then yes, like that, that's something that shouldn't be done. Kuhn said rules of the road boil down to this. Laws that apply to vehicles apply to bikes on the road. Nearly all the, all the same infractions you could have and be ticketed for in a, in, a, in a motor vehicle, you could be ticketed for on a bicycle. Adult bicyclists are not required to wear helmets. However, even without a law in place, it's definitely common sense to wear a helmet on the roadway. 
All right, so what do you think of this new law to try and protect bicyclists? You can go to our Newsnet 5 app and take a poll. Live downtown, Paul Kiska, News 5. Good stuff, Paul. Thank you. And an early heads up tonight for anybody who lives near an outdoor warning signal. Do not be alarmed at 950 tomorrow morning. This week is severe weather awareness week. Emergency officials across the state will be testing the siren system to make sure the sirens are in full working order. Makes sense to make sure they work. We yep. got to get to the weekend here, don't yeah, we? Then we got to we get through to warm a couple up. things. Yeah, we've got a, a little shot of Arctic air, just a little teaser. All right, and then it's gone beginning Thursday afternoon. Okay, and then we begin our warm up towards 60s. I like it. Here we go. Let's show you what's going on outside. We are awaiting the cold. Indeed, the cold air is going to begin to spill back into the region very, very shortly here. Give it another few hours and it's coming. All right, well, widen out our view. Here's the front. Front is still to the north of Lake Erie, but you see the wind shift behind the front. You can see the which way the snow showers are traveling. They're coming off toward the south and east. So yeah, definitely the colder Arctic air will begin spilling in. Give it another three, four hours or so, then that front moves by. Front's going to come through dry, but I can't rule out that we would not see a few isolated snowflakes coming in off Lake Erie. Some lake effect snow should not amount to much more than a quarter to maybe a half an inch in spots. Let me show you the hour by hour. We'll start off here. So we head through the overnight 7.30 p.m. Now watch, we get a few little isolated snowflakes trying to drop in after midnight. There you go, and they should be all but done by the morning commute, all right? Winds will be an issue overnight tonight. They're gonna begin gusting upwards of 20 to 30 miles per hour, and by 8 a.m., there's still blustery wind conditions all across the area, so hold on to your hats going out and about tonight. And tomorrow morning, you can really see the Arctic air here. Here's the warmth. Here's the 70s and the 80s. Here's the 60s, 50s for us in lighter yellow. But one day, this Arctic air drops in and then it moves back north quickly beginning Thursday afternoon. The high builds in, winds out of the north tomorrow. So you will need your winter coats, but we will see quite a bit of sunshine, cold sunshine. Watch the front drop in. Here it comes. Tomorrow morning we'll be in the mid 20s and then our recovery is only into the lower, maybe middle 30s during the afternoon. Tomorrow this is 5 p.m. But notice as we head through Thursday, look, we're beginning to see those 50s bubbling back up on the map. Here's 60s for Louisville. We'll be in the 40s Thursday, but you'll still be able to get outside and practice and play. Then 60s arrive quickly for your Friday. 25 tonight, isolated flakes, mainly cloudy. Blustery and cold tomorrow, uh-oh, only 31, mostly sunny. Definitely a chill in the air, winter code weather. But again, short-lived, short-lived Arctic air. 24 tonight for Akron, 34 tomorrow. Can't rule out a flurry tonight for a couple of spots in the Akron-Canton area. Thursday dry, 45. How about 67 Friday with a few widely scattered rain showers? Maybe a shower or thunderstorm Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I don't think it's going to be a total washout here, folks. Look at these temps. Mild 60s for Saturday and Sunday, 50s Monday and Tuesday. Sports time. Keep trying to put that winter coat in the back of the closet. It just yeah. Keep having to keep in a bag. It sure. Get one of those bags that sucks all the air out of it. Put it there. Throw it away. <laughs> a little space saver it. for us. Yeah. Hey, when we come back, we are going introduce to introduce you to this week's uh, McDonald's Student Athlete of the Week. It's pretty Can't good. Wait. And we'll also hear from Mitchell Trubisky, Mitch, Mitchell, whatever you want to call him, about his pro day down in North Carolina today. How do you do? We'll hear from him next. fun I thought we showed what I needed to show and uh, it was great to be back out here with my boys and we had a good time well that's Mitch Trubisky or Mitchell Trubisky and he's expected to be one of the top picks in the NFL draft coming up uh, a little bit later back or a little bit later down the road in April now the North Carolina quarterback he worked out for NFL teams today on his home turf He'll do a private workout, and one of those private workouts will be for the Browns. He is really looking forward to answering all those unanswered questions about him. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I have anything else to prove. I'm just going to be me and, and continue to be me, and hopefully the coaches, uh, they, they fall in love with that, and they want, and they want me to be their guy. I just, I'm trying to get with a franchise who believes in me, and, and if I could do that, this is just another step of the journey. United States will play for a shot to play against Puerto Rico in tomorrow night's championship. 
The U.S. faces Japan in the World Baseball Classic with the Indians' Andrew Miller repping the tribe. It's a great experience. I think I'll be better for it, and uh, I'm glad we've made it this far. We've got a little bit of work to do, though. Why do you think you'll be better for it? I think it's just, you know, it's another chance to play in, in games that are so meaningful. It's a, it's a playoff-type at atmosphere, and it's a lot of fun. I think we all, uh, you know, want to you know, prepare for those situations because that's the goal when the season gets here is to play in those games. See how he does tonight. You know, it's been a great run for St. Ignatius hockey this year, and this week's McDonald's student athlete carries the big eye on his chest after a great season this year. Varsity, like a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Captain my senior year, all league and all state my senior year as well. I have 4.0 GPA, um, taken a lot of AP classes here, Ignatius, a lot of honors classes, um, scholarships to a lot of colleges that I've applied to. It's not always going to be easy, and sometimes you want to kind of give in and either lean one way or the other. It's easy to take the practice off or not study for the test, but it pays off in the long run. And when you're able to do it both at the same time, it's very satisfying. My name is Connor Kinky, and I am this week's McDonald's Student Athlete of the Week. And congratulations to Connor. If you have a Student Athlete of the Week, go to the NewsNet 5 or go to News 5 app. Times have changed. Exactly. Thanks, Andy. That's it for us for now. For Mark Johnson, Andy Baskin, and the whole team, I'm Rob Powers. Thanks for being with us. News 5 is back tonight at 11. News 5 at 6 has been brought to you by the Ohio Lottery Cash Explosion Game, Saturdays at 7.30 p.m.